Welcome to the Your Company Health Podcast. I'm your host, Andre Wright, founder and CEO of the Wright Consult Digital Marketing Agency, and also the creator of the Patient Buzz Program. The goal of this podcast is to highlight healthcare professionals, their journey, and how they're making the world a better place. Let's dive in. Today, we speak with Dr. Darlene A. Mayo, a neurosurgeon, author, and now consultant who pivoted and changed her career. Take a listen and enjoy this fascinating conversation. I started out being an author, so I was writing, wrote books, and then I did some medical consulting. So I did very traditional medical consulting where I would meet with patients online. And then I did some work for insurance companies that had been denying people care. One of the things I was so frustrated by as a neurosurgeon was that I'd be trying to take out somebody's brain tumor and the insurance company would deny it. And it was because they had sent the case to like a podiatrist. Literally, they do this. They don't send it to another neurosurgeon to review. They send it to anybody with an MD behind their name and they would deny it because they wouldn't understand. They're like, oh, that's a benign tumor. Why does that need to come out? Well, because they're going to go blind and eventually die if we don't take it out. So there you go. So I wanted to really help people in that way. So I did those things. And then the other very interesting part of me is my faith is very important to me. And so I actually started a ministry over the last couple of years, actually in the middle of COVID. (laughs) And what I do, it's very non-traditional. So yes, we're very faith-based, but I also take all my knowledge of neuroscience And I help people understand scriptures and understand their faith and actually get strategies to help them access their healing from a spiritual standpoint as well. So I have kind of these two aspects of me that are very unique, but when blended together, actually really serves a number of people. So I spend a lot of my time in the ministry work right now, but I still do some medical consulting as well. And I really enjoy coaching, consulting with other physicians or entrepreneurs or professionals who really aren't at their maximum potential, because I know all of these strategies in brain science to help you unlock really your genius and your true identity and move into your purpose and potential. And then it's fulfilling and it's not draining. And exactly. so, so and that's it, what I do. <laughs> you know, your story is interesting because I've spoken with people healthcare practitioners, different entrepreneurs, and sometimes they get stuck in a career and they don't know how to pivot. So it's interesting to know that you, obviously there was a moment right there when you decided, ah, I got to shift. Talk to us about what that moment was like. Yeah. So, you know, I loved what I did. And honestly, at the age of, how old was I at the time? 44, 45. I had really achieved a lot of the career goals I wanted. I was working at the Cleveland Clinic, top two hospital in the country. I had done research at at the French Atomic Energy Commission in France, so top research center in the world, but there was something missing. There was just something missing. And I felt like every day I was getting up and just doing the same thing. And the joy that I got from seeing patients improve was great, but it was so limited. I mean, you can only operate on so many people in it. (laughs) A month and year, right? I can't be doing 100,000 brain surgeries a day. So I knew that there was more. And again, my faith is important. So I talked to God, honestly, and here's what I heard. Darlene, you're not only a neurosurgeon, that's not the fullness of your identity. And so as I was even talking to some of my colleagues about this, they were saying, well, well, what else are you going to do? You've spent your entire life studying, training to be a neurosurgeon. How are you going to be anything else? You're designed for that. And I was like, no, this is not right. (laughs) So I just took that leap because I'm a brave person. That's a character or quality that really defines me as my bravery. And I said, you know what? I'm going to figure it out. So I didn't know who I was when I left (laughs) surgery, but I really found it out over the time. And now that's why I'm so passionate about helping people unlock their true identity because it just transforms your life in such powerful ways. And it's obvious that this is your passion. They always say your passion is what you can do without even being paid for it. Oh, right? absolutely. Like you get that fulfillment. Yeah. And it's obvious yeah. that what you're doing, you know, it's very excited about it. Yeah. So. The clients I've found that I work with that are a lot of physicians too, <laughs> they have these goals, but they're not value-based. They're not identity-based. They're literally just like 
well, this is where I think I should be. This is the number of patients I think I should be seeing. This is, you know, that rather than looking at their unique quality, because medical school, let me tell you something about medical school, medical school, like kind of puts you in a box and makes you cookie cutter. That's what medical school does. And so doctors get in their mind, oh, this is my, like they're a technician, honestly, like a monkey. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like this is the idea that they put in your head. And so a lot of the docs I work with have no idea what is the unique aspect of them that makes them so great at what they do and what flavor they bring to that area. So the reason I'm asking you this is because I'm curious if there's some way that maybe I could even serve some of your clients by helping them to get that clarity so that then you can take that idea. And I mean, I'm sure you do amazing at what you do, but Mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't know who they are, then you can create the greatest marketing campaign in the world, but it still doesn't make them may technically make them stand out, but I just think it could be really helpful. So I don't know what your thoughts are. Darlene, you're perfectly right. And I encounter those challenges too with these providers in just like what you explained, they have like one set idea (laughs) of what they want. And sometimes you're just focused on that. They don't see that bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I would do for them to get them in that mindset is to typically bring case studies. I typically bring statistics. I'm like, doctor, almost 70% of patients, they would go online and search for a doctor first if they don't know you, right? If you're going to an area and you want a specific doctor and you you haven't received a referral, you're going to go on Google. You're going to do a Google search and you're going to find the doctor with the better reviews. What I'm saying is that if they can understand it's more than reviews, yes, that's a key, but how do they get those reviews? They get those good reviews by being special in their particular area. So not just like a great technical cardiologist, but what do they add to it? What kind of flavor do they add to taking care of their patients and how do they do it? Like, you know, I have one doc that I work with and he loves injecting humor into his practice, right? Medical school will teach you not to do that. Oh, that's not professional. You can't do that. But as he opens up and begins to do this and even incorporates that, then he will see, and he has seen, like his patients love him. It's significantly enhanced in these. I'm and that's, a very specific, and, 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 simple and, example, but yeah. No, you're perfectly right. And I have an example too. One of a very good client of mine, he's a chiropractor. And mm-hmm. what he does for that, to get that fulfillment, what you're talking about, and to align himself with his purpose, he does missions. Oh, that's awesome. He does missions. Yeah. And yeah. like every quarter, he would go down mm-hmm. to Haiti or Jamaica. He goes to a different place and, and mm-hmm. just give free chiropractic care. And he's yeah, like, Andre, awesome. I live for that. And okay. he finds purpose in his mission trips. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell us more about your conference. Yeah. So the conference is faith-based. It's called The Shift, and it's about shifting your body, mind, and spirit, which is really the thing. And from even a healthcare standpoint, doctors, most doctors don't get this, right? And they're very stuck in the physical. But the thing is, I've done a lot of research into this area. You have pathways in your brain related to whatever health condition you may have. So even if it's diabetes, even if it's cancer, whatever, you literally have pathways in your brain related to it, even if you don't have a neurological problem, okay? There's a very specific imprint or signature in the brain for that. And a lot of times those are tied into other mindsets that could be limiting mindsets. This is why placebos work in some people. Okay. This is literally, there's brain science behind this, that if someone believes that all things are possible, then you begin to see those people are the ones that respond to treatment. And I actually did some clinical research along this line. So one of the areas of the individuals I worked with was people with tremors. So Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, they shake essentially can't function very well. And what we studied was We asked them beforehand how likely they felt like they would improve after the surgery. Okay. And then we measured patient satisfaction before and after the surgery. Andre, I'm telling you, our clinical evaluation saying the tremor got 20% better, 50% better, 100% better, had absolutely no bearing on how 
they felt like they were doing and that completely impacted their life. And they would be just, if they didn't believe that they were getting better, if they didn't feel like they were getting better, you could show them the videos, you could show them the proof, but they would literally live the same kind of life that they were living before with those same limitations. You would not see the improvement. It was absolutely amazing. So, yeah. And so the power of the mind, people underestimate (laughs) part of what I'm doing with this conference is helping people open up and understand that you can't just look at something, a condition, give a medicine, do a surgery and expect that to improve. You actually have to do a lot of work with the mindset of the individual. And for those that are open to discussing the spiritual, you know, that is another level that can help them accelerate their healing. But that's what I see. I see people accelerate into healing so much faster when they do mindset work and when they tap into their spiritual side. So no, you're perfectly right. I mean, it's just like when you get up in the morning, if you get up feeling down and feel defeated and everything, it kills the entire day. Oh yeah. But if you get up with that positive mindset, yeah. it changes the entire day. And no way we have to run soon. I know yeah. you're a time crunch, yeah, but sure. the event is a private event. Where can uh, oh, I'll send you a link to it. It's it's going to be local here in Florida, but we're going to stream it. We have a video streaming service coming right. in to stream it online as well. What is the one thing that you can do? The low hanging fruit to exercise your brain, to feed your brain, to keep your brain healthy. If you say you can do one thing daily, what would you say? Okay. I would say that it's the power of your words. So speak truth over yourself. The best part about you. I always ask people this, what is the best part about you? Right. And then I tell them, wake up in the morning and say that, look in the mirror and say it over yourself because it solidifies those identity pathways in the brain. But based on truth, it's very important that you believe the aspect of yourself. It does not work, trust me, to get up and say, oh, I'm a millionaire, da, 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 if you're not, okay? But if you know, like, you have a great sense of humor and you get up and you say, you know what? I'm pretty funny and people engage with me and, you know, things like that that are true. You solidify that and literally without having to think about it for the rest of the day, you will exhibit that aspect of yourself. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found this information useful. So please go to our website at yourcompanyhealth.com for more. And also like us on and share this episode on social media. We would love for you to leave us a review on, on wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, see you then.